This game right here is so fucking rad. Man, what's going on ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Meditech. The Wii U, it's safe to say, has had a pretty rough lifetime. Uh, some games that have come out and just been utter shit, and some games that have come out that have been hidden gems that not a lot of people have known about because they didn't want to pick up Wii U consoles. But I'm here today to give you another reason why you should dust off your Wii U console by reviewing Xenoblade Chronicles X. It is a open world JRPG. So without further ado, let's fucking start. Story. The game starts in the year 2054 with two alien races battling it out in space dangerously close to the earth, causing massive amounts of damage to our home planet. Humanity at this point decides to evacuate earth in these large arc type ships and take every major city from the planet with them. Through the evacuation, only the white whale who houses Los Angeles, California and a handful of other ships escape the attack before planet earth is ultimately destroyed decimated. We then pick up two years later with the white whale being found and attacked by the ganglion, a sinister alien race, and the white whale is forced to emergency crash land on the planet Mira. From there, you customize your character and you as the player work with the Blade Task Force in New Los Angeles to live, thrive, and help defend the white whale against those who wish to harm it. The story is decent here. It introduces you to the characters, alien races, and scenarios that'll keep you wanting to progress and grind to find out what happens next in the narrative. Even though I wasn't a fan of the ending and it was left a pretty open-ended as far as the Xenoblade universe goes, it's still a pretty fun ride and the lore and story is interesting enough that you'll more than likely want to keep playing to find out what happens in the whole duration of the game. Gameplay. Xenoblade Chronicles X is an open world RPG and presents a lot of gameplay elements that help you survive on the planet of Mira. See, at game start and even 30 hours into the game even, you'll spend time customizing damn near everything on your person, whether it be from creating your character at the beginning of the game or customizing the color of your weapons on your scale armor. There's a lot to customize and invest in. Speaking of scale armor, once you pass a certain point in the game, around chapter 6, through a series of tedious ass events, which you're gonna have a hard time with, you'll get access to the scale armor which serves as a bipedal weapon system that makes Mira seem less scary than it actually is if you are running around on foot. As in many RPGs, the skills and class system make an appearance and they give you free choice in choosing how you want to play and what classes and skills you wish to choose. Like sniping? Pick up a long range class. Done with sniping? Switch to a more close range dual sword style. Dual pistols, dual swords. It gets pretty freaking crazy with the class lineup. Each have unique stats and an interesting way to play the game ultimately. Combat is real time however it's skill cooldown based and you only land attacks and hits when your skills are ready to be used but you can still dynamically move around the battlefield move around your enemies the combat is very very fun once you get the hang of it and mixed in with your possible maximum three other party members it makes for some awesome awesome battles the setting of mirror is large varies by biome and is extremely unforgiving you start in a more open plane sort of setting with creatures that you can either take on or completely get slaughtered by and you can eventually make your way to rich jungle continents to even snowy plain very beautiful continents you'll spend time discovering new lands taking on side missions and affinity missions which build your relationships with other friends and party members picking up items fighting even mining for new resources which give you special currency that you can use to upgrade certain weapon manufacturers in game for better gear over time there's there is so much to do and delve into in xenoblade and this section of the review merely scratched the surface on the amount of customizing exploring gameplay combat all that stuff there is to do in the game things i like the game runs very, very smooth. There are no technical problems at all. And this can be said with not just Xenoblade Chronicles 10, but all Nintendo games. Nintendo games technically are fan no frame rate drops, no technical hiccups, no bugs, no glitches. Everything runs smooth as freaking butter, baby! The progression in the game is very, very nice. Earlier levels start off really, really difficult, but it gets easier the more you progress, and the more that you progress, the more that you earn. So it really, really awards you in investing time into the game. And taking that time to level up and progress, they definitely reward you, and it makes you feel like you really earned something for the time that you put in in the game. Threats are everywhere. You'll be in an open plane somewhere fighting level 3, level 4 enemies early in game, you think you're doing alright, and then a level 80 gigantic dinosaur comes running out of nowhere and just smashes you and your whole squad. It happens. Xenoblade is very unforgiving. You will, 
get freaking wrecked. There are threats everywhere, and the game is just very, very massive and unforgiving. You know, as a lot of people say, graphics aren't everything, but I definitely have to say that this is one of the best looking Wii U games that I have ever played. The visual presentation of Xenoblade Chronicles X is fantastic. The combat is very engaging. You'll be switching between skills on your hotbar to moving around enemies to get a critical hit point because certain skills do have bigger effects on different parts of the body and you can attack based on that. And at times, the combat is rhythmic as well as you time attacks to take out enemies. So the combat is very engaging and at times can be very rhythmic and really fun to get into. I explained this in the gameplay, but the customized is absolutely crazy and in-depth. Scales are simply amazing. Nothing short of absolutely fantastic. Being able to fly through the skies with your squad or running up on a big foe that you couldn't fight while you were on foot but now you're in your scale armor. Your scales can transform from walking to driving to flying eventually so there's a lot to get into with the scales even. Now there's a down part of scales which we can talk about right now versus the dislike part. You treat scales much similar to cars as in you get a certain amount of insurance and once your insurance is up you have to pay for repairs if your scale is damaged so I don't really see this as a bad thing. I see this as pay attention to what you're doing, watch out with your surroundings and make sure that your scales are safe. Make sure that you're doing what you can to keep your scales safe and you're fighting things that are in your range and not outside of your range. That way you and your whole squad scales don't just get freaking demolished. The soundtrack is one of my favorite soundtracks of this year. It's, it's really awesome and not only is it awesome but it has some pretty hilariously corny shit that happens at times. There's some there's some really funny music. But I feel like this is a really good soundtrack um, between the different continents that you go on to. The soundtrack does vary. And because it has a dynamic day and night cycle, the soundtrack will actually switch up depending on if it's day or if it's nighttime. Um, and I really enjoy that it's high difficulty. It's very, very high difficulty. You gotta grind. It is a RPG with MMO elements. It is a single player game, but it does have a high difficulty. It makes you go out and grind and figure out a way to defeat this enemy. So I really appreciate and respect this game for that aspect. Things I dislike. Multiple times I had to reference the internet for help with items that I just couldn't find. I had no clue. There were no context clues on where to find these items. Now there are a lot, a lot, a lot of fetch quest missions in the game. So this mixed in with not knowing where some of the items are, it makes for a really confusing and hard time grinding. The plot of the story, like I really enjoyed the story. Don't get it twisted. I really enjoyed the story, but the plot was just very average. It, it was it was an average plot, but the thing that got to me the most was it left me wanting so much more. It's one of those open-ended games that they're really like, fuck, I want it to keep going. This is very minor, but sound sliders are not in the game. You have an options menu, but there is no sound customization at all. So for example, there was a cutscene where somebody was talking, the dialogue was going on back and forth, and I couldn't hear the dialogue, thank God for subtitles. Couldn't hear the dialogue because the music was just growing and growing, and there was no way to turn the slider down on the music so I can actually hear the dialogue. Subtle annoyance, but it's still there. There are just a lot of pointless side quests and random mission grinding. Uh, I just noticed that there, you know they just did certain filler things. There are different levels to the mission structures, and certain missions were just pointless. They're just like, hey, go get this, go get this, Barely giving you any XP, barely giving you any rewards for doing it at all. But it is an RPG, so there's just a lot of random pointless shit going on. Uh, the early hours will make you pull your teeth out in frustration. The difficulty does spike really early on, and it doesn't really hold your hand, although it's good, earlier on is very, very frustrating and will give you a very, very tough time. Uh, sometimes I was even just on the verge of quitting, but then, you know, you, you figure out ways to get around that obstacle that you're faced with, and ultimately you can surpass that obstacle. So it's, it's, it's cool that the difficulty is high, but for earlier on, it's tough. It is really tough. And if you really stick with it, you will be rewarded later down the road, but it's like, do I want to stick with it? Is this game going to reward me enough for me to really want to stick with it at the beginning to begin with? So, to begin with. So that, those are really just all the dis- Oh yeah, and there's another, one more dislike, there's no co-op in the game. There's no co-op. You can do challenges with your friends, but aside from that, there's no open world roaming for co-op or anything, which the game sets it up perfectly for, and it just doesn't exist. You can't run around the planet of Mira with your friends and your skills just de decimating the freaking- You can't do it. You just can't do it. So that's really disappointing, but that was my, that's my final dislike. Overall. Xenoblade Chronicles X has its really high points and its really low points. See, its difficulty scale is super high in the early game until around, you know, 9-10 hours in. It's very, very tedious, very grindy, and very unforgiving, but the game rewards you for sticking it out, and with the amount of customizing, exploring, and fun combats that we had, the game is a very good title 
for the Wii U, but do I think it is worth it? Definitely. If you're a fan of JRPGs and you don't mind a grind in games, later on you'll thank yourself for sticking it out and the charm of the game will bring you in even more. There's a lot of humor, a lot of floaty, fun characters. It's, it's a good game. Now, if you own a Wii U and you like RPGs, get the game. If you've never played an RPG before, I would recommend passing on it, trying out something a little bit easier before diving into this unforgiving planet of Mira. But with all that being said, thank you guys all so much for watching this episode of Mab Attack. I really, really enjoyed this game. Really enjoyed putting this video together for you guys, so I really hope you appreciate it. Even if you don't have a Wii U, even if you're not interested in JRPGs, I appreciate you guys for checking the video out regardless. It really means a lot to me. Thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers, by the way. I haven't done a video since then. Thank you to every single one of you guys. I'm going to say this in the next video as well. Thank you guys all so very much. If you have questions for the 10,000 subscriber Q&A, please drop them down below in the comment section. I will check those out. That video will be here hopefully before the new year, but we will see what happens. But if you guys enjoyed this episode of Man Behind This episode of Man Behind the Please be sure to attack that like button. All you he math stay rad. And all you she math stay fab. And I'll see you guys on the next episode of Mav Attack. Feel like things gonna be alright. It's fucking chilly in here. Should I put the hood on? Hood on? Hood off. I'm kind of feeling the hood. My hood off. My hood off. My hood off. I'm kind of feeling the hood off. Alright. Hood off. Let's go.